that guy in that old shirt Who must be the fence expert Who's that guy in that old Operations and expenses It's time, it's really time To elevate small businesses It's time, but Joe and Drop His knowledge is relentless This rhyme of mine Is getting a bit ridiculous And here we go We're live with Joe In the show Vince fam, how in the world are you guys? It's good to see you guys again Two live Q&As in a week who could have thunk it, right? Uh, glad to be back with you guys back in Springfield, Missouri, coming to you live from the Expert Professional Wood Care Studios. Thanks to Caleb, Ashley, and the team. If you guys are listening to the podcast, this is you are listening to a recorded version of a live Q&A that we host every Saturday, 10 a.m. Central. And it usually goes for an hour, plus or minus. Usually not less than an hour. It usually goes a little bit over. I have a feeling today is going to be no exception. Today's guest, if you've Read the description, the title, etc. You know exactly who it is we're talking to. Caleb, how in the world are you? Good morning, Joe. How are you, man? I am doing super well. Doing super well. How about yourself? Hey, I am doing great. Glad to be here. It's uh, it's sunny out my window. <laughs> it's not 20 degrees anymore. So, yeah, man, I'm doing great. Can't beat that. <clears throat> Caleb, we are two and a half weeks out from Zaney University. Yeah, I know, man. It's coming up quick, man. Tell me about it. It's getting it's getting here quick. <laughs> it's gonna be here before we know it. It always is. But we can get it out of the way, right? Because the the it's a it's kind of like the gates 
of uh, entering into the season. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of the kickoff to the season. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great time. Usually fence fence uh fence tech and then standing university are kind of those things. Once you get past that, it's time for no rest. Just, <laughs> just work. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, fence tech's coming. It fence tech will be just a couple weeks after. Yeah. And good morning. University. Good morning to everybody who's watching. I see a lot of comments. Good morning to my kids. They're watching this morning. Good morning, kiddos. Taking notes. <laughs> I hope you're taking notes. I'm going to quiz you guys on this later. Well, let's say hello to a few people. Steve is the first person here today. Stevie, good morning. We Guys, we've done it. We have figured out how to get a box full of hats shipped to Stevie. And they are on their way to Ireland as we speak. Uh, not and not did nearly you, as bad as I thought it was. I don't know. Did you send him any orange pants? <laughs> no orange pants no because oh even the fence expert doesn't wear orange pants no we all know better than that my kids this morning specifically asked for their orange <laughs> pants and orange shoes yeah well orange or shoes are a thing those are a thing I, today's outfit is orange shoes blue jeans and this orange shirt <laughs> yeah joe's wearing orange pants everybody <sighs> making all things new we know this guy what's up justin look at that avatar not avatar the profile picture justin good that's grief justin. that's what he looks like man is it it's for real yeah good morning from Plattsmouth, new new england no nebraska i'm <laughs> making all things new what's up justin joseph madison pro fence from covington georgia welcome joseph fellow joe good morning Michael Greenfield's here. Great spend a few days with you and Braden in Tampa. The Nationwide Industry team really enjoyed your visit. Yeah, if you guys watched the live Q&A on Wednesday, you know uh, we, we took a flying trip down to Tampa uh, to meet with uh, Michael, er Eric, uh, Caroline. Oh, man, now I'm going to have to name all of them. Mm, and, and the rest of the Nationwide team. There's a lot, there's a lot of good people we met uh, down there. Had a great time. Uh, we filmed a ton of content, so you guys will see that coming up. Well, you'll see the week in life here in a couple of weeks, but then we also filmed quite a bit, quite a bit of content for you guys. Michael, welcome and thank you. Appreciate you guys hosting us. We're, uh, well, we'll just say this: stay tuned for a surprise uh, on the show for you. I, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Finch Genius says, "Good morning, good morning." One month out from Finch Tech, hope to see many of you stop by the Finch Genius booth to consider off-site manufacturing potentials. Absolutely. Look forward to stopping by and saying hello, meeting you in person. Bo Divorce says, good morning, Fence fam. Coming from Milton, Freewater, Oregon. Good morning, Bo. Jason's here with us again. Morning, Joe. Tail end fencing in the house. Good morning, Jason. Justin says, intro music for a great workout, motivation music. I agree. Matt did. Matt does some great stuff with a guitar. He is incredibly, incredibly talented. Caleb, Jason says, good morning to you as well. Yep, good morning, sir. Front Rock Fence, hey, what's up, guys? Good morning, Joe and Caleb. Good morning, Front Rock Fences. I believe um, I believe Nationwide is getting your free giveaway sorted out with you directly if they haven't already. Jeremy, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jeremy. Devin McNeil says, Frontier Fence checking in from Arizona. Good morning, Devin. We know this guy. What's up, Kenny Dugan? Wow, live twice in one week. Good morning, Joe and Caleb. It is, tw it is twice in a week. I, it, it's a lot, but we think it's worth it. Todd says, good morning, Joe. Good morning, Todd. We know this guy, Caleb. Kasurik Distributors, Christopher. Hey, guys. Good morning from the land of cheesesteaks and round donkeys. Good morning. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? We, uh, we talked about that when I was down in Tampa. Talked about those Philly steaks, so... Good times were had by all. So, Caleb, State and University is coming up, uh, and and you've got some big announcements. Maybe let's do this. Let's cover some ground a little bit before the big announcement. Maybe reiterate a few things. Yes, um, sir. We've already talked about. I think we talked about last time that the venue changed. Yeah, yeah. Right. We brought it home, so to speak. We brought it back to the first place we did it, the original location. So, if any of you guys came. We're back at the DeKalb County Fairgrounds in Alexandria, which is it's just uh, it's about 45 minutes uh, outside of Nashville. And uh, it's a small town. It's like Mayberry. And so we want to, um, 
the, the problem with the old venue was one, it was getting small for us. Sure. And, and there was a bigger venue next door. It was a lot of money. It was a, it was a substantial, you know, it was a pretty, pretty nice pickup truck. Uh, you could, yeah. you know, we could buy that or we could, you know, we, we could buy 10,000 turkeys probably for the price of that. <laughs> well, so, it would have been a massive step up in capacity too, wouldn't it? It, yeah. it didn't seem like a, a, seemed like a couple steps ahead. Yeah. The problem was, I think we could have filled it, but the problem was we're, we're not a, we're not a, an, an event company. Sure. We are, we're a, you know, we're a service business and that's what we do, you know? So, but the difference was the big problem at the other place was we would build a beautiful fence. Um, we would stain it, we would tear it down, Yeah, you know, and we, we did this every year and then, and never really could build the infrastructure we wanted. So we brought it home to a smaller community and we can build things there. And if we build something for them, they said, please don't tear it down. <laughs> Deal. So, so that's, you know, that's what we want to do. We wanted to, to give, um, you know, this event has always sort of, in my mind, been something we would do for charity. You know, we want to do it for a good cause. Yeah. And uh, we want to be able to, we want to be able to invest in our town. And, uh, and maybe, maybe we build a fence, maybe we build a new deck area or something kind of platform or mm -hmm. a log cabin front porch for people to play <clears throat> music on a stage or something like that. And, uh, and be able to continue every year to build upon that infrastructure and, uh, and have things to stain and clean and, every year, you know, and so there's a lot of wooden infrastructure there. Um, we got nice buildings. We got an expo hall. We got a stage. We got a big ag center. So if it's raining, it's not going to stop us this year. We'll be able to I love that. A dry fence in the rain. So, I don't know what it is about you and I, but we bring rain with us apparently. Well, I mean, I don't want to do it on a, when it's sunny because I got to work when it's sunny. Right? <laughs> well, that's, that's fair. That's fair. But yeah, I don't, so we it was got like every place. event last year had rain. Yeah, we got a great place. A lot of parking, a lot more compact. Not as many fancy restaurants around, but we got the small town restaurants, and we're, we're we hope to have a um, a shuttle that runs back and forth, and uh, within within about a two minute walk, or um, you know, or just a quick car ride, shuttle ride. Our town has um, we've got a coffee shop, we've got a grocery store, we've got restaurants, we've got a deli, we've got uh, we got a gun store, so you can get a coffee, a sandwich, and a Glock. <laughs> and, um, and then we've got some antique stores and stuff like that. So we, we're going to ask everybody to support our little town. You know, we, yeah. um, we, we did the math and as many people that come to our free event actually puts, you know, close to a half million dollars into the economy, you know, yep. in those in, in the big city, well, the city doesn't even notice it, but if, sure. if you brought half of that to our town, uh, Joe, you would be the king. <laughs> of, of Alexandria. So it would, it would do a lot because there's a lot of people that have moved from the city to the country and open stores yeah. in a town that's, that's picking back up. So we want to do that and take care it, of our city. It's a really nice town too. Like yeah, I've it's a, it's, it's a nice place. Yeah. And, and all our people live here, you know, so um, we love it. Yep. Absolutely. So um, basically, yeah, it's coming right up, right around the corner. Now, if people haven't been getting this information, how can they can sign up for notifications, right? By registering. Probably. Yeah. Let me get you. Uh, I'm going to drop it in the links right now. I'm going to drop yep. it in the, the link. But yeah. It's Staining University, obviously in Woodcare Expo. We do this every year. I'm going to drop it into the chat because yep. there you go. Because I can't put it in the comments. Well, we're already, it, it's already in the description yeah. as well. Awesome. Yeah, we've got loaded in the description. So if you're not getting updates, that means you're probably not registered. So you need to get on it, register so everyone knows you're coming and so that you can get updates about all the goodness that is the event. Yeah. Yeah. You're coming, right? Uh, yeah. I wouldn't miss Joe, it for the Joe, world. Joe will be there. So yeah. So yeah. Justin Menendez, he's he's watching today, making all things new. We've yeah. we've got a great, we've got a great deck for you to demonstrate on. Uh, we got a great place to grill steaks. Yep. You know, um, and nobody has to leave. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, Joe. It's going to be a lot of fun. We got we got big plans. We got we're going to do. Um, we want it to be, you know, so so many times at these. Anytime you go to an event, you you tend to learn more after hours or in between yep. sessions and things like that. And so yep. we've. We're leaving room for that. I mean, we have a big fat block of training in the morning and we're doing hands-on training this year, like, like, because this is, we have a lot more control at this venue. So 
we're going to have dip tanks there. We're going to do pre-staining. We're going to pre-stain wood. We're going to show everybody what it looks like. We're going to let the cat out of the bag. Um, I'm probably on a most wanted list now because of that. <laughs> we're going to do it. You know, there's a lot of guys who want to stain. They want to add that to their business, but they don't want to take the risk of overspray. They don't want to take the risk yeah. of, of sending guys out because that's not their specialty. Well, you can train a, a pretty good blue healer dog. You can train him to pre-stain lumber, you know, with the right dip tank. Yeah. You know, so, um, so well, we're you can provide that. a better product, arguably too. Absolutely. You can provide a better product. And, you know, some people say right now, maybe the economy's they're worried about it because they're watching the news too much. We're not seeing it, but yeah. if you're worried about that pre stains, a great low cost option to make your, your value go through the roof as a fence contractor. Well, I'll tell you what we do. One of the things we do here. So we used to offer discounts in the winter, right? Just try to keep the guys a little bit busier. Now this is obviously pre pandemic. Um, this year we started, uh, we went ahead we decided we we're going to do the same thing again, but instead of offering discounts, we offered a free pre-stain upgrade. We ran the math on it. The math was pretty similar between offering a 10% discount and offering a free pre-stain upgrade. So we've been absolutely pre-staining boards left and right. We've had the last three weeks of, uh, cedar, cedar jobs pre-stain. So now obviously we're only pre-staining cedar. We don't pre-stain the pre-treated pine that we put up. It's still a bit wet by the time we get our hands on it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I tell you what, that's been a massive differentiator for us. We've been offering pre-stain, gosh, I, at least three years, three, four years for quite a while. And our competitors still haven't caught up. One of them has now partnered with a local stain contractor to do staining on site. Mm -hmm. um, but no one offers pre-stain. And it's yeah. for us, it's a pretty easy upsell. Like, you know, Mr. Miss Customer, wouldn't you rather that when your fence is done, it's actually done? No, we don't have to schedule another contractor to come out and stain your fence. We don't have to worry about the weather. We can pre-stain, no matter what, whether it's pouring rain or five degrees outside, the, the stain shop's heated. So we can yeah. pre-stain boards whenever. And the big thing, Mr. Customer, Mr. Customer, is that your fence is done when we're done. No more mess. Yeah. No more contractors in and out it's around funny. the house. Yeah, man done is done and that's it's usually a pretty easy pitch yeah so i'm hoping for all the fence guys that are watching and listening they'll come down to this because this is um this is free it's a free event it, it's going to cost you some money to get down here but sure. we're going to pack it full of some some really really cool stuff that you can take back and you can turn into dollars in your yep. business an opportunity and competitive advantage man an edge right yeah so, so we're doing that we're gonna we're gonna pull out the um we're going to pull out the vinyl siding. We're going to pull out the hardy board. We're going to pull out, you know, the, the brick, something like that. And yep. uh, we're not exactly sure how I'm going to set it up yet because I've got some big ideas. But I want to show people what it's really like. You get overspray on a house when we're staying in a fence, how to deal with that, how to fix well, it. Well, that's the thing. So we did from your from your visit in Springfield or when we did put on State University here in Springfield, um, we have a clip and it's still doing really well on the channel, a short clip of you just talking about it. Hey, you know, you can wipe it off. It's not going to etch. It's not going to do any of that. You wouldn't believe the amount of people that just flat out don't believe those statements are true. It we've got, We see them in the comment sections of the YouTube video where they just don't believe that you can wipe off overspray. You know, they off of metal, off of siding. It doesn't matter. They're like, well, you might not believe it, but I've said we've done it. I we've sprayed. We've got overspray on a house and rinsed it off. We've got it on metal fittings and wiped it off. I mean, we've do lived you, that life. It do, is do you not believe in science. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's the thing is like, I, you watch a 30 second video and you say, I don't believe it, but you're listening to one. They were listening to you. So the manufacturer of the stain who should know it better. Uh, but also it's presented by a guy that uses the stain. So it's like you could choose not to believe it if you want to. I mean, Sounds there's still like people. That Joe, I take full responsibility for that. I will fix that. What, what's that? I'll fix it. I'll make it known. <laughs> I, will, well, I will bust all these myths here. I will. I, I will couldn't believe it, it when they were just like, they just could not, they will not accept it. Like, I don't, of all the things that we could be arguing about, this isn't one of them. But then, like, one night I was sitting there, I was like, I can't believe, I can't believe these people don't get it. But I was like, wait a minute. There are still people around that believe the earth is flat. 
So it's like there's a certain amount of people, no matter how much evidence and data you give them, they just believe the sky is orange. At, you, you, you remember the guy who really. shot himself up into space with he built the steam rocket and he would shoot himself up and it would come back down and he was a flat earther. <laughs> or, everybody, or everybody called him a flat earther and he was trying to shoot himself up to go see if the earth was flat or not. And I remember watching him on an interview and the whole world made him out to be this crazy person. <laughs> now here I, we are. I think he just had some sort of syndrome where he literally would speak his thoughts. You know, he had no yeah. filter, but he wasn't derogatory or anything. Sure. And they said, so you're a flat earther. And he said, no, he said, I just can't dismiss it. And I thought, <laughs> I can't dismiss it either. I thought I've never been to space. So. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I think the Earth's round. But anyways, that was his whole thing. He wanted to shoot himself up up into the top of the atmosphere so he could see and then come back down. And so he would believe. But I think he eventually was he died doing that. So <laughs> he did it yeah. like 20, 20 or 30 times. But you get on top of a really tall building. And like we'll go up to the top of like the the arch in St. Louis, and you can start to see like curvature. Yeah, yeah and you can see it in an airplane. You know, we see those. Yeah, things. yeah. But who yeah. knows? Yeah, it's uh, it is. But you got a great question down here, man, from Corey Bigelow. Yep, I'll yep. Get to that one. Absolutely. So Corey asks, when you're pre-staining, it is usually Western red cedar. Has anyone been doing this with the kiln dry Japanese cedar to skip the drying process? I'm not sure giving up Western Red is a trade-off we want to do. Um, Caleb, I'll let you hit it first. Why would you give up Western Red Cedar? Yeah, you could offer both. Yeah, so um, Western Red Cedar, if you have the space, usually you can dry it um, anywhere from one week to three weeks in the sun. You know, if you got a really, really wet load, you just sticker it. You take it down and you sticker it. And that would be putting a uh, sticker or pieces of, of slats in between the layers. And if you can get Western cedar ones, that would be great. Um, yeah. But you can dry it out. You can put it under fans. You can put it on pallets and move it around. Most yep. pre-stain operations will do that. They'll, they'll bundle it up so high and they'll put it in the warehouse and they'll have a forklift grab it, put it in the sun during the day, have it in the warehouse at night. And you will be very surprised at how quickly um, – western cedar dries yeah we just uh, leave it in we don't even take it out in the sun we just put a dehumidifier in that warehouse oh yeah and, and it, it brings the humidity down to about 45 percent. yeah it's not a problem that works well and then uh japanese cedar i don't know if, if my understanding on the japanese cedar is you know you see them air drying it you know they, you see them stacking the boards up like this the pictures on the internet of them air drying it but my understanding is that it has to come into a kiln and be you know, brought up to temperature to kill any type of bugs. Mm -hmm. When you when you bring um, wood into a kiln, my understanding is that it it breaks, it cracks the cellular structure of the wood, and so the wood it essentially kills the wood. So if you if you cut a western red cedar tree, um, and it's green and you don't kiln dry it and you put it up, it thinks that western cedar tree thinks it's still alive. It just doesn't know where its roots are. are you know, so you know, it, it will try to repair itself. You know, if you put a hole in it with a, with a nail, it can, you'll see it discolor sometimes and things like that juices come out or enzymes. And, um, when you do that with Western red, so it, the, the Western red cedar is still alive. It still moves. It can still be flexible and things like that. The Japanese, because it's been in a kiln, those cellular structures are broken. Now there's nothing. So, so if it gets too dry, too fast, or wet, and then and then redries. It can warp, it can crack, it can twist. Yeah. So, I think um, a lot of the problems that people experience with Japanese cedar are due to the kiln drying process, not to the to the quality of the wood. Because if you go and you look at a Japanese cedar tree, it looks like a Canadian cedar tree. They look very similar. Yeah. Um, so I think it is actually that kiln drying process that makes it so tough, but oil-based stain can help with that. You know, if you have a penetrating sure. oil, it can go in the wood and keep it in a little better shape. But I think all the bad rap on the Japanese stuff is from the kiln drying process. Well, and when you talk to fence guys that have used it, they really don't like the pickets because since they're so dry, I mean, when you nail up a fence, you typically try to butt those boards tight together. Mm -hmm. The The traditional thinking is they're going to gap because they typically do. As they lose moisture content, they te tend to shrink a little bit. And that's where you get the gap. Kiln dried has the opposite problem, at least in our environment where it's incredibly humid. 
if you butt those boards up next to each other, they're going to absorb a certain amount of moisture, just free absorption out of the air, and then they're going to swell, and then they'll buckle. So you almost have to install them with a little bit of a gap, knowing that they're going to expand, and hopefully don't. Hopefully you you build that expansion joint in there enough to where they're not going to buckle themselves. Um, we now this being said, we use the Japanese two fours. We use the JPC two before eights. Two before are a nice product, and if they swell a little bit, that doesn't really matter. They they, uh, they have a nice two before. They do, they do. But the pickets, I don't. There's there's a company that's bringing a bundle of the Japanese. Well, they don't call them Japanese, but they call them import kiln dried cedar. Like, well, I don't. Okay, I don't know why I, I we're trying to get it. Yeah, I don't quite understand it because a lot of it is Japanese cedar, yeah. but it comes from China. And and some people try to say that it, it's cut in Japan, it's taken to China to dry, and then it is shipped over here. You know, that's that was that's kind of like you know sending the egg to China, hatching the chicken out, sending it back to America, yeah, to uh, to raise it, and then sending it back to China to process it, and then sending it back to the grocery store. It doesn't make any sense. So, so I don't know. Um, now the steel, I'll say this: you know, there's certain um, like manufacturing processes that are cheaper in China. Honestly, because they're environmental, they don't really have environmental concerns. No huge, like, yeah. but so like the steel. So we're getting into this on wire weaving, right? In that the steel strand, um, at, for the most part. Now there are there are at least two exceptions to this in the industry. Most of the industry buys its steel blanks from China, so and then they'll draw the strand out of it here in the states. So it's te technically a domestic strand, but it's using an imported steel blank, right? Yep. Now, there there are two exceptions to this that recycle steel here in the States, create their own blanks, and then draw here in the States. So I don't want to cast too wide of a brush on this. But, um, and, I, and I learned this when I was talking to um, another manufacturer, basically saying, you know, talking about bringing in import strand. You know, is it worth it? Like, is it really the same quality as, as domestic strand? And like, do we want to get into the import game? Like, I don't know, you know, it, I don't know if we want to do business like that. And his point was, Joe, where do you think the blanks come from that they draw the steel wire from domestically? Like it comes from China. So you need to decide how far down the line you want to go with this. But but in this in this sense it makes sense. So China is the biggest buyer of scrap steel. They smelt it, recycle it, create all sorts of stuff with it, and then ship it back. In that instance, this makes sense. You right? know that for one thing, that's a very Donald Trump thing you said there. It's from China. Secondly, um, what is from China? <laughs> it's a joke, man. Oh. Uh, I have a terrible sense of humor, but <laughs> it, it shows you what regulation in the United States costs. So, yeah. so China can buy our scrap metal, take it across the other side of the world, manufacture it into something and ship it back here and sell it cheaper than we can produce it here. That's an incredible thing to wrap your mind around. Yeah. Uh, that's like, that's like literally by being able to buy, uh, back to the chicken and the egg, you could almost have a chicken, ship the chicken to China, get the egg, ship the egg back here, and they're doing it cheaper than we can by having a chicken in your own backyard. And we could do it here it's in the crazy States. to think about that. Well, yeah. and it's and and not a, and this isn't only a China. China came up because that's who this particular NBA, NBA, supplier of using is. But yeah, there are. But there's also there's also Mexican. There's also companies like this in Mexico. There's Mexican mm -hmm. options too. So I don't mean to say this is only like an Asia specific thing, but. Uh, but to your point, yeah, we we seem to be the country that uh, tends to regulate a lot of things. You some know, of I them, think, some of them are good ideas, but I think a lot of those, you know, China, maybe Mexico, and different places. Ch China, maybe not so much, but there are there are some places where the manufacturing uh, technology is not as good, maybe as it is in other areas. Yeah, and and sometimes that makes it to where they can make the product much cheaper because they can get they can build a pretty a product that will hold up with a smaller gauge, for instance. Sure. But a lot of times the older manufacturing practices are beefier. You know, they might put out a heavier gauge wire or a heavier yep. gauge steel. That's rated. It's rated 11 and a half gauge, but it's really like a 
10 and a half gauge or whatever, just because their tolerances aren't there. So there's, well, there's probably some benefits to, to both. And that's what they see on the galvanizing. So 1.2 ounces are pretty, it, it's like a standard. You can also get 0.8 ounce, but 1.2 ounces is a decent standard here in the United States. Um, it's probably what's most widely used. And, but, but you get, uh, you get reports. So when you buy the strand, you'll get a report back of what the strand, each coil of strand, what it actually tested at. Cause they'll snip some of it off. They'll do tensile testing to see what the tensile strength is, but they'll also do a coating test where they'll just me they'll melt and measure the coating, how much coating is on, you know, this section of wire. Um, so it all, so we got a report back from the wire that we're bringing in and the minimum on it was 1.5 ounce. And then some of it got up to two ounces. Um, it's like, so to your point, you're getting a little bit more product anyway. Like it's just probably because, you know, their manufacturing processes maybe aren't the same as here domestic or their coating processes aren't the same. They're, they're uh, probably offsetting, you know, the price of that, that, that galvanization or zinc or whatever that is with labor, yeah. you know, labor's cheaper. Yeah. So they can afford to, to not have the $4 million machine to test everything. Yep. Mitchell Gregory's got a good question. Would we have to use cedar or metal posts, cedar two befores over treated pine when pre-staining? Yeah, you would need to use cedar materials uh, to pre-stain. Um, well, I mean, that would be my answer. Caleb, what would your answer be? This is my life, man. This is pine. This is cedar. All of these pieces here were cut out of green two by fours. And there's one that was not, that one was not. All of these were cut out of green two by fours and they were green. And we, we, we took these slices dripping wet, dropped them into a stain formula, uh, and then stacked them up just like this, like you would in a dip tank scenario, like a, you know, and, uh, here's the finish. Interesting. So can you, can you pre-stain a pine picket? Ha have we sold pre-stained pine? Yes. It can okay. be done. It can okay. be done. You do need to dry it. And, yeah. and when I say you need to dry it, if, if the board is super, 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 super wet, you'll get some variation in color. See that variation in color? Yep. This, this on the edge here is, is a piece of part of the wood, but the variation in color that I'm talking about is, it's so hard to do things backwards. It's mm -hmm. right here. You got a little variation in color right here. Yep. That's from the wood being excessively wet. So if you can downstack your wood today, put fans on it tomorrow morning, you can stain it. Uh, Interesting. Obviously that's not black stain, but this is all treated pine in it. I mean, this was wet, just went into a regular stain formula. And, uh, and I've got that formula sitting right here. It's, well, but, but yeah, great. it can be, it can be done. And uh, so you can do pine and, and that may be a really, really good option for a lot of guys who just maybe are in markets that won't support the cedar, or maybe, maybe uh, they don't have space to to dry for for weeks at a time. They just need a day of dry time. Well, you heard it here. I stand, I stand corrected. You can pre-stain pine. You just have to dry it. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you can do it wet. You can. I mean, that's you've seen the sure. stuff from Home Depot. You know what it looks like. <laughs> I mean, it can yeah. be done. Depends on the quality you want to put out. Yeah, but it comes down to quality. So, so, and and we very well now could be reevaluating this. But for us, uh, we pre-stained cedar. Um, the pine, the pine, we typically uh, we don't. Not typically, we just don't. Uh, but now we should, we've got actually we've got a pallet of pine pickets that have been drying in the shop for several months. The thing is, it, you're okay. Let me preface. Let me touch on one subject. Oil-based stains prevent warping, cracking, and twisting. Water-based stains, which you would have to use for the uh, for the treated pine, will not okay. prevent okay. warping, cracking, and twisting. Um, so we do have a solution for that as well. And, okay. Uh, okay. So I, yeah, but but the, so but if we're pre-staining with oil water, base, it is a cedar. It, it's a dry material. It's a dry material. It's okay. A dry material. So you could still pre-stain treated pine. You just have to dry it, which we sure dry. You know, you can do that with post and two befores. And again, it's it's two weeks, three weeks, and it'll dry. But yeah, you know, some people just don't have the space to have fifteen jobs laying out here drying on their yard. They got room maybe for one job or two jobs. Yeah. Well, and what and, and it all comes down to space and product availability. We'll just keep we'll, we'll typically keep a bundle of two befores and a couple bundles of pickets 
just up in the racks at any given time inside with that dehumidifier. Um, but yeah, so we don't necessarily pull in just per project, but, but if that's just cause we had some extra space and we decided to use it for that. Uh, Corey also has a follow up. Does anyone pre-stain cedar post? Uh, would there be issues of the wood not bonding to the concrete? I don't think that would be an issue. Um, and I would put a, I would put a post saver sleeve on there anyways. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. you're not going to run into any issues. Yeah. Post saver sleeve is going to give you a warranty against rot. So that way you've got a warranty in place for that, which is the number one reason people replace posts anyway yep. is, is rot at ground level. I put a post saver sleeve and then it, you get a warranty that you can give to the customer uh, against rot, but I don't. So it's speaking about oil base because there were not, they're not film forming, right? So if it was a film forming stain, maybe there'd be a concern that the concrete wouldn't bond to it. But if we're talking about oil based stains, I don't, I don't see why there would be an issue. Steve Shire says, good morning, guys. Good morning, Steve. Kenny says, I'm dipping some pressure treated pine this afternoon that was picked up last week. It's sitting at 10% right now. There you go. That's Texas for you, man. <laughs> so there you go. So pressure treated pine is fine to pre-stain as long as it's dry. So now we need to find some more space in our stain shop and start uh, stacking some treated pine. But I tore we'll it a 350,000 square foot, 40 foot tall facility the other day, and I loved it. It was amazing. That is massive. So we were down in Tampa. I forgot to ask how high the ceilings were. One hundred twenty-seven thousand square foot, um, but these they were they were eight to ten racks high. Like mm -hmm. it was massive. This yeah. facility, yeah. like it gave me like warehouse envy of just oh, yeah. like walking through you. And it reminded me a lot of your place in that it was clean, clean. Like when we were when we walked through it, and. I feel like, you know, like when you walk through a place, that's just been cleaned. Like, Hey, you know, like when we were kids, we having guests over mom yeah. had to deep clean the house cause guests are coming over. And then when you, when the guests show up, she's like, Oh, excuse the mess. <laughs> what? No, we deep cleaned this house for the last two days. Excuse the mess. No, no, yeah, no. And mom was always stressed while, <laughs> while that was going on. Oh, there, and you were cleaning right up until the car pulled in the driveway. Yeah. Like we I one kid was, was the lookout. Yeah. If you're listening, <laughs> mom, I love you. Yeah, right. Hey, it was all for the right reasons, right? But but I feel like you know when that's happening. When I walked through that nationwide and then the first time I walked through yours, it was really similar in that I looked around, I was like, Oh, this is a thing. They keep this place very clean. And I you know I don't know how. I, I do I, know how. But it's like I, I we struggle with that with our little warehouses. It's not it's yeah. it's it comes down to the to people and I think core values, man. I, I went down in our shop yesterday to I got some Ipe wood that, that Walt uh Dennis gave me and we've we've we pretty sure we got the right formula down. We've tested it, it's been up for months on real jobs, and we think we have it. So I got went down and got a piece of that Ipe and I and you know I stained some of it and I had to go get a a bunch of stuff and mix things up and do it. And uh, everything was like a Pee Wee Herman. It was on the wall. Every tool is outlined and has a name. And I I got a drill. I got a hammer. I got a rag. I got a brush. I got a piece of wood. I moved a forklift. And I, you know, tidied myself up. And when I tidied it all up, it still was out of place. And I thought, I can't be that guy. <laughs> I took the drill battery off, hooked it on the wall, hang the drill up, put the chuck up, put the hammer where it went, park the forklift, right? Move the, and I, and I just thought, wow, this, it's so much neater than I would have ever kept it. Yeah. It's, find, find somebody who is good at that and it will make such a big difference. Yeah. Who has impressive attention to detail. That was the thing. So, um, the lady that runs this warehouse, Braden was her name, uh, Nicole. Oh. Yeah. They're right. Yeah. Her name's Nicole at Nationwide. Nicole, if you're watching, great job. Um, she runs a tight ship for this warehouse. And you could tell like that was one of her one of her things is that everything stays clean at all times. So listen to this case. So her pickers have dust, like dust mops, like handheld dust mops on their pickers. And they're these pickers that you can ride up to the top and and pick one or two boxes. So while they're doing that, they are one of their jobs is to keep everything clean. 
So they're dusting like all of this inventory as they're going up and down and picking. Like well, that is man. that's attention to detail. What it, what what is it that happens as soon as you walk into a place? First impression is made. Yeah, yeah. It's well, the way it goes. Well, and you start forming all the rest of your opinions off that first impression. Yeah. You know, we went to the Biltmore two years ago for a fence fence thing. And, and I went to the counter, you know, the big counter, and they had these big posts sticking up. And there were two lamps, you know. There's like, here's my mason jar. There's a lamp on either side of the counter way up high. And um, customer service was terrible, by the way. I was extremely disappointed. But the lamps had dust all over them. This is at the Biltmore. We get to our room, the top of the blinds, you know, and <laughs> dust all across them. It was just, I thought, this would, this would, this is a management problem. This is not yes. a, you know, it's, it's a leadership problem because uh, it just surprised me that a place like that, because you would expect it to just be impeccably clean, impeccable service. And it, yeah. just, and they just didn't care. It was well, those are the visual things. And so I think what goes on in the back of your mind is like, wait, if you're not doing this, like? well, yeah, what else aren't they doing? Right. So you take your flashlight and you're checking the, the sheets. You know, it's like you're, <laughs> it concerns you, you know. Okay, we got a question for you. So Jason asks, uh, my son has joined the family business and wants to expand into standing market. He has done a ton of research and your videos have been a ton of inspiration and help. Uh, at one time, you had a list of procedures posted somewhere that your company followed almost like a how-to list on starting a standing business. I was wondering if, if that even still exists. Yeah, yeah, that was called our field guide. And I'll, I'll just be very upfront and honest with everybody. We still have the field guide. It's an SOP manual. And I have struggled with, with one thing is I used to give it away to everybody. And to me, it was worth a million bucks because if I would have had it earlier, it would have I could have made a million bucks with it probably just using – that and it, it's not that it's the right steps it's just it's a system you can use if yeah, you do it's a good this, starting point you'll get the job done right mm -hmm. it had a lot of tips it, it had everything from how to show up to work how to dress how to handle customer you know facing things how to do the job but we we really have a dream of opening multiple locations with owners we want to do this the same thing like Seegers has done and we want to get really really good people to to be partners with us in other locations and i was a and basically i just feel like if we did take partners that would be their that would be what we give them this is how to do it and i feel like if um if i just gave that away to everyone that i might be doing a disservice to the people who want to invest in building a stain and sale experts location and so that's why i've, I've pumped the brakes on that um it's not not any other reason and uh, so I'm just chewing on that, and I'm sure you get it when I when I put it like that. You you understand, and and that's where I'm at. And I'm happy to help with any processes or procedures, but we just don't have any field guides right now because we may be wanting to to pass that on to some of our owners. Makes sense. Makes sense. Justin says, "Folks who take pride in what they're doing, absolutely, these are the people that you need to surround yourselves with." Vero Fence and Deck is with us. Morning. Morning, Vero. Corey says, uh, that's culture. When you have to stop and put everything back because your crew has it figured out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Front Rock Fence says, hey, Joe, did you end up swinging on the gate with the nationwide hinges? So we, well, Eric did. Eric did. But <laughs> so how those posts are mounted, they're not mounted to take, a lot of weight so the hinges did fine actually um but the brackets that held the post to the trailer um didn't didn't hold up so well so that's actually a youtube shorts idea that we're playing around with is put some nationwide hinges on a gate and have me swing on the end of it uh to show how much weight they hold um so and and I'll be careful with how we say this because some some stuff was shared in confidence, right? But um, they do what they call point load testing, uh, which is they basically they'll put the gate up, they'll have a post, they'll put the gate up with the hinges, and then they will uh, put a device on that puts pressure on this gate, pulls this gate down until it fails. Uh, one of the, one of their hinges, uh, they're not really sure how much weight it can hold because the machine maxed out at like what well, was it like four thousand pounds or something forty five hundred pounds thousand 
I don't, know, I don't know. It was a lot. Several thousand pounds, and the machine just maxed out, and they could they didn't break the hinges. So they're like, I don't know how much it'll hold. Like we'll we'll put this on it, and we will feel. They put they they put a weight rating on it that was less than what that whatever the forty five hundred or six thousand pounds was that the machine. So anyway, uh, so so me, you know, my two fifty or whatever it is, jumping on the end of a gate is. It's going to be fine. So it comes down to just how the posts were mounted. But to answer your question, no. Uh, well, I, yes, I guess we did. Did you catch that on film when Eric was swinging on the gate? Yeah, it was kind of hard to see because he's like on the backside. But <laughs> yeah, I, I did have it on video. We might make a short out of it or something. Just and when so then we went to go look at it and like I said, the hinges were fine, but where the how that hinge post was mounted to the trailer was tweaked a bit. No. Caleb, you want to talk about your big announcement? This is yeah, we, got, we got about 13 minutes left. Well, we got however long you want, but we, we're in this 47 minutes, so now might be a good time to start talking about the big announcement. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about flying saucers in Antarctica. After, hey, I'm, I'm after in the, top of the hour. So <laughs> yeah, so so um, a lot of you guys know we try to bring in great speakers and great people to inspire. You know, Staining University and in, in this Woodcare Expo is it's not about just going and learning how to uh, stain a fence or a deck or to clean a fence or a deck or a log home or pre-staining lumber. It is, it is also about inspiration for your business. So we're going to talk about bidding. We're going to talk about culture. We're going to talk about marketing. You do a great job of marketing and so does Jacob Salem. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we do our best to bring in other people who are not really professional speakers, but people who are in the business. This guy has a big business. He's been where we are 20 years ago and he's, he's jumped a lot of hurdles, share his knowledge, share her knowledge. And, um, and I think when people walk away from our events, they are surprised and inspired and that's what it's all about. So, um, I was talking to Tom Reber the other day and, uh, I twisted his arm and he's going to come be a keynote speaker for us. And so if you know, Tom, uh, you know him. If you don't, it's Tom Reber, the contractor fight. I think he's got an HGTV show, but he yeah. made his his basically self known um, because he's a fantastic coach for business yeah. owners, uh, particularly contractors, and um, huge following. I don't even know how big it is. It's big, and, uh, and he's a good guy. So he's going to speak to you guys, and basically he's going to kick you in the butt or kick you in the teeth and get you guys to where you're getting your income up. To where it needs to be, get you to stop stealing from your family, right? Get you getting your books in order. He's going to make you do the right thing. And uh, so I'm super excited about that. Um, he's got a lot of coaching programs. I told him to come. I believe in what he's doing. I'm not a co member of his coaching, but I used to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We were in his coaching program before. Yeah. So Tom has grown significantly. He's grown his community a lot, a lot. So we were in his coaching. He had some more um, like personalized coaching programs back mm -hmm. in the day. Uh, and then he just, he and I had a pretty frank conversation where he said, Hey, this thing's growing. And, you know, I need to try to sh share more of my coaching with more people. Yep. And to scale that, I have to cut back on the one on one type coaching to do one to many. Right. I mean, that's really your option is one to one yep. or one to many. Uh, which I which I understood. I hated to hear it though, because it's you want to talk about a kick in the butt. That guy will absolutely deliver it. Make uh, you better, yeah. So he's coming, and and I I hope that uh, I hope that somebody that needs it will find him there and can get in some of his programs and and change. Yeah. Because I'll be honest, uh, we did Contractor Sales Academy in mm -hmm. 2019, didn't we? And mm -hmm. Contract, you could say it changed my life. Well, it did. It gave me lots of experience, put me there, but it created a series of events, dominoes in effect that that made a significant difference in my life. So um, I'll be forever grateful for Tom yeah. Reaver for that. So I'm I'm proud of that he's coming, and I believe in what he's doing. So I'm happy to. It's you know we're not bringing people in we don't know or trust or believe in. So so that's going to be great. Um, <laughs> Justin Minnesota says he's. Uh, Fantastic and beneficially harsh, but honest. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's clean. That's the truth. It's it's clean. So I don't want to. I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea. But yeah, I mean, for for me, no, I'm man. the kind of guy that you you really need to beat me over the head with something, and I take it like that's the way I want to be talked to. To be well, honest. and and he's big on accountability. Accountability is 
It's that's important. huge. Which which is what uh, business owners is what we need. So I think the one path that business owners can go down is there's really no one to hold them accountable, right? Like they they are at the top of the mountain now. They can ask the team to hold them accountable, but ultimately the team answers to them, right? So there's a little bit of an echo chamber that goes on. Um, Tom was really good at just kind of cutting to the bone on an issue. Not beneficially harsh is probably the right way. He didn't ever do it in a mean or derogatory way. He just cut straight to the issue, straight to it, yeah, and and held it held us accountable. But which is man, you what know. We needed. There's something so so I always try to talk about something that that's going on in my life or my business. And one of the things that uh, as I grow as a leader it sounds so weird to say that I'm a leader as I grow as a leader in our organization. And then all of all of the other leaders in my organization, because there's a lot of them. We don't realize how much weight our voice carries. Within an organization. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, I look at everybody as family, as team members, as close. And um, but if you say something not, and I'm not saying something negative, I'm just saying, let's just say that you you do um, you build wooden fences and that's all you do. If if you say, man, it sure would be cool if we, you know, started doing gate operators one day and, and then you just go on about your business and it was just a thought. And it's not even it's in the you know, maybe in 10 years you're thinking about it operations hears that and they go holy crap we don't know how to do gate operators we'll have to get new trucks it's new tools who's going to be on call it, it, they get stressed out they freak out and all you did was throw an idea up there that you were just <laughs> thinking about yeah Me meanwhile you caused a train wreck in your organization and so i'm just i'm learning and and, and we're learning together it's like when we say something we need to be very careful what we say um, yeah when everyone can hear it not to hide things but to just be be uh you know and this and it doesn't matter how big your organization is if it's just one of you or two of you yeah um, you you got to be careful because your voice if you're the leader or a leader man your voice carries weight well and that's something i i absolutely agree that's something that i've been kind of working on so i you so i'm the kind of person like i like to put my ideas out just like say them out loud and see how they sound and then just kind of mull them over mm -hmm. but then nine out of ten ideas don't don't turn to fruition, right? They're just right. mediocre ideas that aren't worth the energy. Um, but the problem is, you know, if I say 10 ideas and someone hears 10 ideas, but then we only execute one of them, they're like, Oh, we're not, we're not really executing any of these ideas. Like this is like, we execute one out of 10 things we talk about. Like that's, are we really beneficial? It's like, well, yeah, I didn't, I didn't say them to execute them. I said them just to see how they sounded and to kind of bounce them off somebody else. You know, this is the same problem that I faced. I think both of us are very vision kind of people. We like to see things and, 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 um, we, we want to get it out and talk about it. So I've always wrote my ideas down. I got this new cool thing. It's called a remarkable. It's awesome. You should get one. But the way I describe it, I've, I found a great way to describe it because, because we have a business coach and he, he was saying, well, a lot of people say that you change your mind and you, and you move and you do things differently. And, uh, they kept saying that cause we do f f surveys and feedback and, and, uh, and my wife kind of stood up for me. She was like, no, he's, he's not, he's, he's staying the path. And I found a great way to, ex to explain myself. Cause a lot of operate owner operators or, or business owners get shiny object syndrome. Yep. I've seen all these shiny objects. I look at it like this. I'm going down an interstate and it's straight I'm going to my destination, it's straight down the road. I'm going 150 miles an hour and there's billboards and I'm passing billboards all the time. Every once in a while I see one and I'm like, Oh, look, you know, that's the biggest, what is it? The chocolate factory or whatever. I want to talk <laughs> about it. There it is. There's the chocolate factory. There's this idea. There's that idea. And I talk about it, but all the while I'm going straight down the road. And every once in a while, you might find something where you do need to get off the exit. But generally speaking, we're staying straight and narrow down the path. And uh, and I, I just told my team, I was like, hey, that, a lot of times that's the way I I like to talk ideas. Because if me and you get together, we're talking ideas. Most people yep. don't. Most people don't care. And so sure. uh, we just like to spit it out and talk about it, chew on it, think if it's a good idea. And if it is, we might do something. But um, it, yep. it confuses people. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Well, I mean, because they hear a lot of these things getting talked about, but then, like you say, 
none, you know, we don't end up doing the majority of them because for whatever reason, timing's not right or whatever. It's not a good fit or whatever. Uh, but to someone that's not used to that, someone that sits on the other side, they're like, we talk about a lot of stuff we don't ever do, you know, well, and, and that's, you're talking about billboards analogies. Like we're talking about all these things and we never do stop at them. No, I didn't say we should stop at them. I was just, you know, making that, that just goes it. to show how much weight your voice carries and then how much they believe. Like if Joe says something, Caleb says something, he can do it. If we want to start an airplane company, if he's talking about an airplane company, he's probably going to start one. Where do we start? You know, yeah. um, you know, and we're just thinking it'd be cool. You know, we're just talking. Yeah. About and, and my wife is, is obviously has caught on to how these ideas come to fruition. And I, I think we talked about this last time to where I started watching a lot of YouTubes on lumber mills. I was like, man, these things are cool. I watch it. And so she usually, after kids go to bed, she takes a bath and I just kind of watch YouTube. And so she came in one of these nights after taking a bath. She looks up, she goes, no, no, I'm putting my foot down on this. Like, no, what? Like, I'm just sitting here watching TV. Am I supposed to be doing something else? She goes, no, this is like the third night in a row I've come in here and you're watching videos on lumber mills you're thinking about a lumber mill and I'm saying, no, like we have too many things going like, uh, okay. Like I, I get it. I get it. But it, but it's funny how like we kind of get in a system of patterns where in people can start to recognize those to go, yeah. Oh, this is like the third time I've heard about this. We're probably going down this road. We're probably taking this exit. That's the you third know, time Caleb's talked about this billboard. We're probably pulling off for a minute. I, I am, I now try to let things, you know, obviously very, very successful people at the time from idea to implementation is very short. If Grant Cardone comes up with an idea today and it's a good one, he implements it tomorrow. Boom. It's done. And he's, he's monetizing that idea, right? That's what business is all about. I guess you can do that when you get to a certain point. But for me now, I, I just really want to think about it for a little while. Let's think about it and let's think about it and make sure it's right. And what I've found lately is there's a lot of good ideas, but if I just go back to my core things yeah. and stay right there, that's, that's where the biggest growth is. That guy, Alex Hormozy, um, I love watching his stuff. He's a very good, very good business person. And uh, he says, just do something that it would be unreasonable if you did it for 10 more years that you wouldn't be wealthy. If you just work yep. every day and you, if you're a salesman, if you just made the phone calls every day and did the follow-ups and, and recorded your information and tracked it for 10 years, it would be unreasonable that you wouldn't be a high net income earner as a salesperson. If you just yep. built the same fence and got it right and focused on customer service every day for 10 years, it'd be unreasonable that you weren't the biggest fence guy in town. So um, that's what I'm working on. A little bit of, a little bit of discipline. I love it. I love it. We're a little bit behind in the chat. Let's see. Don't forget Stephen Shires up there from the UK. We skipped him way up earlier. Did we? I thought we said hi to him. Well, we maybe did. I, I didn't say hi. Okay. Good morning go. sir, from the uh, good, good day. What is it over there? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's afternoon. It's five o'clock. Yeah. Hope you guys are enjoying a Saturday afternoon, probably sitting in your garden, drinking a cup of tea. There you go. And, uh, there you go. Listen to the show. Appreciate you guys watching. They they have big news. Their first shipment of stain is on the way over there. To the Heck UK. yeah! I can't express the gratitude and how proud I am to see that our stain is going to the UK. That's just incredible to me. It's, it's huge. For real, it's like it's not even real. Absolutely. Uh, so Corey says he loves Tom's line of "I'd be better off slamming my junk in a car door instead." It definitely makes a point. So. Tom has some vividly descriptive ways of saying things. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah, but he also knows his audience too. I'll say that, you know? Yeah. Then Justin goes on to say, Tom teaches army core values, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, personal courage, but in business terms and values never meant uh, he would be rude or crude. And he's not. That's the thing is, is, you know, some of the people might see Corey's comment about, I'd rather slam my junk in a car door and think that it's being crude, but it's really when in the proper context, it's not. Tom, you know, Tom it, knows if he's on a job site with the middle of a bunch of rough and rowdy roughnecks. And he also knows if he's at a black tie event, he can do both. Yeah. He, he, he knows, he knows how to act and he's, he's a great guy. So yeah. you, you, if, if nothing else, come see Tom, because normally 
it costs a lot of money to go see Tom Reber talk. Yeah. I mean, he talks to these events that, yeah, it's expensive to get into his talks. Well, into his groups, it's not it's not cheap to get into his groups either. Divine Fence says, hello, Caleb, Joe, and Fence fam. Hope everyone has a great weekend. And Caleb, your hair is getting long. And I just cut a couple inches off of it. Yeah, it's getting long. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good morning. Sparta Fence says, how's it going, gents? Good morning. Hello, Sparta Fence. Sparta Fence would like to know, Caleb, does the stain go to California? Yep, yep, it is. We're in uh, eight fence factory locations, I believe, in Southern California. We've got some some locations in the Bay Area as well. And uh, and we ship for free to California, 50 state and Canada compliant. So if you need stain, we'll get it to you. And that's one of the things, that's one of the things I talk to folks about when we're talking about, you know, uh, talking to customers, like, is it safe? And because we like to talk about that. There's kids or pets, either their kids or pets or the neighbors kids or pets are going to be near this fence. And that's one of the things I was like, listen, they, they say they can sell this in California. And if you can sell something in California, it's got to be pretty okay. If it passes that test. I just want to say my wife's coffee is just phenomenal this morning. Mm -hmm. She did a fantastic job. That is a good way to get more coffee. I I just realized I've probably taken 600 sips of this today, but it's just so good. (laughs) Uh, Steve Shire says, uh, I've been busy selling stain. We are counting the days to launch. Very good. Very good. So They are doing a lot of hard work over there. That's for sure. I love it. I love it. What what part of the UK are you guys starting with? Um, I believe we're going into Manchester. Okay. But, but and Steve can can talk better because I don't know the geography over there as well as I should. But yeah. Uh, but we would we would love to take over. I, I think if we do a really good job and folks will see the value and we can take over. Um, oh, absolutely. Most of the big markets, the wood care markets for all of all of UK. So that would be England. Um, Scotland and Northern Ireland is is really where we want to be with it. I tell you, somebody to to try to partner with on some content over there uh, down in Nottingham, DNJ Projects, uh, phenomenal channel. I mean, they have really great content, but they also have a really great following. Um, so it would probably be worth. And um, they are open to sponsor videos. I, they mentioned sponsors kind of throughout their videos, so I know they're kind of open to those yeah. conversations. I would love that if they're watching, if someone could connect us, I think that would, would make a whole lot of sense. We would definitely yeah. like to work with them and, and just I can, get their um, opinion, you know, I'll, 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 uh, I'll write an introductory email, uh, for you guys, from you yeah. to them. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so Stephen Shires, um, I'm, I'll Joe, I'll send you Stephen's email address and if you'll just okay. carbon copy all of us. Yeah, that that's, be- that's exactly what I, yeah, absolutely. I can send it to them and carbon copy you and Steve on it. And just say, hey, these are some great guys. It's a product that I use. It, I would like for you guys to have a conversation about it. It, it will, it will for, for the guys over in the UK, the significance is good product for one. Yeah. Second yeah. thing is it will extend your season. I, yeah, I, I don't know, two to three months more of revenue in your business over there um, means the difference between your, your wife driving a jalopy and something nice. It means the difference between kid going to, you know, this college or that college it means the difference between you know it makes a difference right that's a lot more income that you can make so we want to we want to help people with that and you can make income on rainy days that's Mm -hmm. that's the big thing for us rain days or winter days cold winter days where it's snowing outside we can still be making some income or making items that we will be we will make income on like not necessarily that day but we can be doing revenue generating activities even when it's inclement weather outside so, which those guys, I think they're in the UK watching DJ's program. It seems to rain a fair amount over there. Finch Genius says offsite fabrications is, is ideal for dipping pre staining. Absolutely. What is that offsite fabrication? So, um, for dip pre staining. Yeah, I need to, well, I need to have them on the show. Uh, so, uh, Finch Genius is software that helps you uh, pre design and build pre built uh, wood panels. So you can, and this is a very rough understanding of it, but you can pre-measure your panels and your slope, enter them into the program, and it'll give you your exact dimensions on what your panel needs to be and that sort of thing. So and you can shop, really detailed shop drawings. Yeah, and you can okay. yeah, so you can pre-build pre-built panels, but customize pre-built panels. That's probably a better way of saying it. Um, Let me ask a question about that. Do you take a picture of your of your area and it does it for you? Is it have technology to do that, or do you have to input it manually? 
That I don't know. That I, I don't know. I haven't app. really dove into it a lot. We saw an, a guy showed me an app the other day. I think it's called Eagle View 3D or it's called uh, something. Yeah, it's Eagle View's big for a roof. Yeah. Now. It, you take a picture of all eight sides of a house. And, I, and I'm going to go to my notes here. And it will it will break down every square inch without you measuring anything, just from photos. It'll break down every square inch of roof, of gutter, of soffit, of siding, of brick, of column, of concrete. It will do everything. Um, Interesting. It's it was an incredible program that someone showed me. And so it must, yeah. Like, so so Eagle View's massive. They got started in the roofing industry to where they could take a satellite view of a roof and give you a pretty exact idea of how many squares of roofing like it'll measure peak it'll measure drop it'll measure all of that uh beacon, slope and all. yeah yeah it's called beacon 3d plus beacon 3d plus yeah and i've got that in my notes here to check it out but i saw one of the takeoffs it was incredible it's it's more detailed than you could it, it's everything it's crazy absolutely uh steve says d and j projects are on my list to get in contact with i will absolutely help you with that uh, Divine Fence says, can't go wrong with expert sand seal. Ashley, Caleb, and the team are incredible. Absolutely agree. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. So low, it, and this is what we, this is one of the things we talk about with customers. Low, low VOC is a huge factor. Um, we've tried, before we came to stain seal, we had tried other stains in the market that are big names in the market. Um, but the thing is, every time we peeled the lid off, you get hit with the chemical smell. I was like, if I can smell it, it's there, right? And and even if we can explain a way that it's safe and explain a way that it's this, like, I can't imagine spraying a fence and then having to explain to everybody that it's perfectly fine. You know, those chemicals you smell, they're not dangerous or they're less dangerous or whatever it is, whatever the talking points are. Uh, whereas with the expert stainless steel, you pop the lid open and it doesn't, it doesn't smell like chemicals. I mean, we pre-stain in a closed facility. We don't have to air it out. We don't have to worry about inhaling fumes and handling chemicals or anything like that. Uh, Steve hits the nail on the head when he says low VOCs are a huge factor. It's a big deal. It's, it's a big deal. And I, the, the reason we do that is because we, I guess you could say our, our little outfit of the stain and seal experts podcast and just me and my desire to learn, talked to so many staining contractors, and I called the old ones first. I didn't yep. call the young guys. I called the old ones and figure out all the old tips and tricks and things. And and over and over and over, there's diminished lung capacity. There's cancers of the brain, cancers of the of the pancreas and kidneys, and um, lung cancer, and you know, cancers in the in the sinuses and stuff. And they never wore a mask. Mm -hmm. Um. So one, yeah, where, where you're at, but, but man, when you got a product that, that when you smell that, I mean, it's, it, it's coming out, it's going up, it's evaporating, it's going, it's up going somewhere. Air. Yeah. And it's, uh, it, you know, if you had a choice, you know, <laughs> of a dog that's going to kill you or a dog that's going to not kill you, you know, well, I'm going to take the dog that I can pet and not worry about it killing me. So, well, yeah. And when we were standing in, when we were standing on site, I'd always say, you know, I got this boy and he is all boy. And if I tell him not to go touch the fence, he will go touch the fence and then he will, he will touch everything else. Right. Mm -hmm. But I don't want my kids coming in contact with something that there's a question mark about, right. That are these harmful because he's also going to like lick his fingers and pick his nose and do all the other stuff kids do too. So this chemicals going all sorts of places that we don't want it to go. Um, it's it's a no-brainer. Steve hits the nail on the head. Low VOCs are a huge factor. Uh, Finchini says, nicely said, it's a software-driven process uh, that works off measurements. Uh, Justin says, being realistic with ideas is a, is a start. Six month, one year, and then two year goals and ideas. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, one, three, five year. Are, are pretty good increments for where you want to be in one year, three year, and five years. Um, what is it, Caleb? You underestimate or you overestimate what you can get done in one year and you underestimate what you could get done in five years or something yep. along that line. So yep. you got to have the goal if you, you know, if you don't have the target. Well, yeah. then you have your year goal and you can break it out into quarters and then you yep. can break it out into months if you really wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. But absolutely. 
Well, Caleb, let's start landing the plane. Big news is Tom Reber's coming to headline the event uh, that's coming up in just a few weeks. It's going to be awesome. We're going to do logs too this year. Logs and pre-standing are the things that we haven't done in the past. Yeah. And then uh, we're also going to talk about, I think the biggest th takeaway here is, is we're launching, we're releasing our, um, our lifetime warranty on our stain. This is big news for us. This is big news for the industry because this is going to give you a maintenance plan. Everybody's asked us for a maintenance plan and for ideas and how to do it. We've tried a lot of things. And if you go buy a new Ford truck with a warranty to keep your warranty, you got to change the oil. Keep yep. your warranty. You got to change the transmission filter, right? You got to do this and that. Why should it be any different with wood care? So our warranty makes the customer, requires the customer to do the right thing when it comes to wood care. Wash, you know, we're going to wash our fence every so often. We're going to do maintenance coats of stain every so often. And that's, that's really what the contractor needs to be able to say, hey, this product has a lifetime warranty and you need me as your professional to maintain that warranty for you. I'll do all the work for you. The schedule is right here. All we have to do is follow this and your fencer deck will last tremendously longer. Lifetime warranty on the finish. Love it. So that's and it. That's rolling out soon. Yeah. Yeah. It's rolling out. It's done. It's just, we're just putting the bow in the, on the top of it, the icing on sure. the cake. But, but that's the big thing for us this year is, is doing that. And then, then pre-staining, letting the cat out of the bag on pre-staining, doing the logs, doing the maintenance. It's going to be a big, it's going to be a big event this year. And, we can't I can wait. see us creating quite a bit of content around that. We're yeah. so we're in the process of building a new stain tank, um, so or designing a new stain tank. So I'd like to get with you on that and see, you know, kind of what your guys' looks like. Do some measurements on it, and because mm -hmm. our fabricator, like he's got the idea, but we want to make sure we get everything just really dialed in. So we'll be making some content around that, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, yeah, that'll work, man. Can't wait. Sign Very up. Link. It's free. Come. Yep. It's free. You can, if if you are in here and here's the thing. Because some some other events right now have been struggling with attendance. If you because watching the news, the economy. If you think that the economy is going to slow down, how can you afford not to come? Get yep. better. How can you afford that? Yep. If the economy doesn't get go down. How can you afford not to come to an event that's going to make you better, make you stand out in your marketplace? Well, especially, I mean, we obviously, we obviously have the fence fam here and guys, if, and, and to put that into perspective for fencing companies, you know, if you think things are going to get slower, why not put another tool in your belt? Mm -hmm. You know, why not put another offering on the table of, you know, Mr. Miss customer. So what we did was we would send a thank you letter out after each project was completed and if it was a wood fence, we would say, you know, we recommend that it wasn't stained or that we hadn't sold stain with already say, you know, thank you for doing business with our family. We appreciate it a lot. Uh, your fence comes with a lifetime workmanship warranty that is cover that covers this, that, and the other, uh, to properly maintain your fence. We recommend staining it. This is a service that we offer. And, you know, for more information, contact our office. Yeah. You wouldn't believe how well those letters work. They work very, very well. And, and when we first started right. offering, we sent that letter, a version of that letter to every previous wood customer we had, uh, just saying, hey, the best way to take care of your fence is to stain it and seal it with a quality product. We offer the service, and we can offer the same great service on the staining that you know that we offered on the wood fence. Contact our office today. You know, Joe, in 08 and 09, there was, there was a bit of a recession you might have heard of in the fence business. And I was in the fence business at that time. And we, we, you know, we didn't close our business down or anything, but what happened was at that time, there were a lot of corporate layoffs. If you remember, a lot of people lost their job from corporate America that were people that were in the, in, you know, in the real estate or the mortgage industry. And they started fence companies, you know, they just fence companies popped up everywhere. And, yeah. and there was still just as much work being done, but because people were trying to make ends meet, the, the margin shrunk. And mm -hmm. so there was just a lot, it became a lot more competitive. If I had a staining service or pre-staining that I could offer, it would have um, it would have put us so far ahead of the competition. They would they by now they we would have been so far ahead they could they could never catch up. So, agreed, agreed. It's a good tool to get in your belt. Yeah, man. Um, the link is in the description. It's totally free to sign up and come see us. I think you'll walk away with an immense amount of knowledge and education. 
It'll absolutely be worth whatever it costs you to get there and stay there. It'll, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it without, without someone that, you know, without you actually being there, you have no way of putting a value on it. But I think it speaks volumes too, that we see the same people year on year. I mean, we, how Justin's been coming for as long as I can remember, you know, so it's, it's guys like that, that are, that have come once seen the value and now they come every year. Yep. I love it. Link is in the description guys. All right. Well, Caleb, let's land the plane. So guys, Caleb's coming on, you know, as long as there aren't conflicts, that sort of thing, the last Saturday of every month uh, is reserved for Caleb. I'd like for him to give us uh, just updates on the brand and what's coming out and also give you guys the opportunity to ask your questions about fence staining. So put that on your calendars the last Saturday of every month, more or less. Uh, Caleb will be here with us unless one of us has a conflict. Yep. And if you if you're out, I'll run the show for you, man. Don't worry. Hey, man. be careful what you wish for. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. All right, guys. For now, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. And we'll see you next week. See ya.